Welcome back to the Think See Listen channel, where I give it to you raw, uncut, and uncensored, unedited, and completely unprofessional. All to give glory to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Having dis disappearing video syndrome over here today. I'm going to get back on to reading about St. George. I, I was thinking about St. George today. Slayed the dragon. I haven't read his life um, in a while. I don't really remember much. We got a pretty decent read here, so he deserves his own video. St. George... He, he was, uh, back in the 200s and, and stuff, I believe. So, great martyr, victory, victory bearer, and wonder worker, George. The holy, great martyr George, the victory bearer, was a native of Cappadocia, a district in Asia Minor. And he grew up in a deeply believing Christian family. His father was martyred for Christ when George was still a child. His mother, owning lands in Palestine, moved there with her son and raised him in strict piety. When he became a man, St. George entered into the service of the Roman army. He was a handsome, brave, and valiant. He was handsome, brave, and valiant in battle. And became, and came to the notice of the emperor Diocletian, who reigned from 284 to 305, and joined the imperial guard with the ranks of committees or military commander. The pagan emperor, who did much for the restoration of Roman might, was clearly concerned with the danger presented to pagan civilization by the triumph of the crucified Savior and, intensif and intensified his persecution against the Christians in the final years of his reign. Following the advice of the Senate, of the Senate at Nicomedia, Diocletian gave all his governors full freedom in their court proceedings against Christians, and he promised them his full support. St. George, when he heard the decision of the emperor, distributed all his wealth to the poor, freed his servants, and then appeared in the Senate. The brave soldier of Christ spoke out openly against the emperor's designs. He confessed himself a Christian and appealed to all and appealed to all to acknowledge Christ i am a servant of christ my god and trusting in him i have come among you voluntarily to bear witness concerning the truth what is truth one of the dignitaries asked echoing the question of pontius pilate the saint replied christ himself whom you persecuted is truth. Stunned by the bold speech of the valiant warrior, the emperor, who had loved and promoted George, attempted to persuade him not to throw away his youth and glory and honors, but rather to offer sacrifice to the gods, as was the Roman custom. The confessor replied, Nothing in this inconstant life can weaken my resolve to serve God. Then, by order of the enraged emperor, the armed guards began to push St. George out of the assembly hall with their spears, and then, and they then led him off to prison. But the deadly steel became soft and it bent, just as the spears touched the saint's body and it caused him no harm. In prison, they put the martyr's feet in stocks and placed a heavy stone on his chest. The next day, at the interrogation, powerless but firm of spirit, St. George again answered the emperor, You will grow tired of tormenting me sooner 
then I will tire of being tormented by you. Then Diocletian gave orders to subject St. George to some very intense tortures. They tied the great martyr to a wheel beneath which were boards pierced with sharp pieces of iron as the wheel turned. The sharp edges slashed the saint's naked body. <clears throat> At first the sufferer loudly cried out to the Lord, but soon he quieted down and did not, unt did not utter even a single groan. Diocletian decided that the torture... The tortured one was already dead, and he gave orders to remove the battered body from the wheel, and then went, went to a pagan temple to offer thanks. At this very moment it got dark, thunder boomed, and a voice was heard, Fear not, George, for I am with you. Then a wondrous light shone, and at the wheel an angel of the Lord appeared in the form of a radiant youth. He placed his hand upon the martyr, saying to him, Rejoice! St. George stood up, healed. When the soldiers led him to the pagan temple where the emperor was, the emperor could not believe his own eyes, and he thought that he saw before him some other man or even a ghost. In confusion and in terror, the pagans looked St. George over carefully, and they became convinced that a miracle had occurred. Many then came to believe in the life-creating God of the Christians. <clears throat> Two illustrious officials, Saints Anatolius and Protoleon, Protoleon, who were secretly Christians, openly confessed Christ. Immediately, without a trial, they were beheaded, beheaded with the sword by order of the emperor, also present in the pagan temple was Empress Alexandra, the wife of Diocletian, and she also knew the truth. She was on the point of glorifying Christ, but one of the servants of the emperor took her and led her off of the led her off to the palace. <laughs> the emperor became even more furious. He had not lost all hope of influencing St. George, so he gave him over to new and fearsome torments. After throwing him into a deep pit, they covered it over with lime. Three days later, they dug him out, but found him cheerful and unharmed. They shod the saint in iron sandals with red-hot nails, and then drove him back to the prison with whips. In the morning, they led him back to the interrogation cheerful and with healed feet, and the emperor asked if he liked his shoes. <laughs> the saint said that the sandals had been just the right size. <laughs> then they beat him with ox thongs until pieces of his flesh came off and his blood soaked the ground, but the brave sufferer, strengthened by the power of God, remained unyielding. <laughs> The emperor concluded that the saint was being helped by magic, so he sum summoned the sorcerers, or s summoned the sorcerer Athanasius to deprive the saint of his mir of his miraculous powers, his miraculous powers, or else poison him. The sorcerer gave Saint George two goblets containing drugs. One of them would have quieted him, and the other would kill him. The, the drugs had no effect, and the saint continued to denounce the pagan superstitions and glorify God as before. When the emperor asked what sort of power was helping him, St. George said, Do not imagine that it is any human learning which keeps me from being harmed by these torments. I am saved only by calling upon Christ and his power. Whoever believes in him has no regard for tortures and is able to do the things that Christ did. Diocletian asked what sort of things Christ had done. The martyr replied, He gave sight to the blind, cleansed the lepers, healed the lame, gave hearing to the deaf, cast out demons, and raised the dead. Knowing that they had never been able to resurrect the dead, through sorcery, nor by any of the gods known to him, 
and wanting to test the saint, the emperor commanded him to raise up a dead person before his eyes. The saint retorted, You wish to tempt me, but my God will work this sign for the salvation of the people who shall see the power of Christ. When they led St. George down to the graveyard, he cried out, O Lord, show to those here present that you are the only God in all the world. Let them know you are as the mighty... Let them know you are... Let them... <laughs> When they led St. George down to the graveyard, he cried out, O Lord, show to those here present that you are the only God in all the world. Let them know you as the Almighty Lord. Then the earth quaked, a grave opened, the dead one emerged from it alive. Having seen with their own eyes the power of Christ, the people wept and glorified the true God. The sorcerer Athanasius Falling down at the feet of St. George, confessed Christ as the all-powerful God and asked forgiveness for his sins. Committed in ignorance for his sins committed in ignorance, the obdurate emperor, emperor <clears throat> the obdurate emperor in his impiety thought otherwise. In a rage, he commanded both Athanasius and the man raised from the dead to be beheaded, and he had St. George again locked up in prison. What's up with Diocletian, bro? The people weighed down with their infirmities, began to visit the prison, and they and they there received healing and help from the saint. A certain farmer named Glycerius, whose ox had collapsed, also visited him. The saint consoled him and assured him that God will restore his ox to life. When he saw the ox alive, the farmer began to glorify the God of the Christians throughout all the city. By order of the emperor, St. Glycerius was arrested and beheaded. The exploits and the miracles of the great martyr George had increased the number of the Christians. Therefore, Diocletian made a final attempt to compel the saint to offer sacrifice to the idols. They set up a, a court at the pagan temple of Apollo. On the final night, the holy martyr prayed fervently, and he slept, and as he slept he saw the Lord, who raised him up with his hand and embraced him. The Savior placed a crown on St. George's head and said, Fear not, but have, cur have courage, and you will soon come to me and receive what has been prepared for you. In the morning the emperor offered to make St. George his co-administrator, second only to himself. The holy martyr was a f with a feigned willingness answered, Caesar, you should have known me, you should have shown me this mercy from the very beginning instead of torturing me. Let us go now to the temple and see the gods you worship. Diocletian believed that the martyr was, was accepting his offer and he followed him to the pagan temple with his retinue and all the people. Everyone was certain that St. George would offer sacrifice to the gods. The saint went up to the idol, made the sign of the cross, and addressed it as if it were alive. Are you the one who wants to receive me? Or are you the one who wants to receive from me sacrifice befitting God? The demon inhabiting the idol cried out, I am not a god, and none of the and none of those like me is a god either. The only god is he, is he whom you preach. We are fallen angels, and we deceive people because we are jealous. Saint George cried out, how dare you remain here when I, the servant of the true God, have entered? Then noises and wailing were heard from the idols, and they fell to the ground and were shattered. There was general confusion and a frenzy. Pagan priests and many of the crowd seized 
the holy martyr and tied him up and began to beat him. They also called for his immediate execution. The holy empress Alexandra t tried to reach him, pushing her way through the crowd. She cried out, O oh God of George, help me, for you alone are all-powerful. At the feet of the great martyr, the holy empress confessed Christ, who had humiliated the idols and those who worshipped them. Diocletian immediately pronounced the death sentence on the great martyr George and the holy empress Alexandra, who followed St. George to execution without resisting. Along the way, she felt faint and slumped against the wall. There she, there she surrendered her soul to God. St. George gave thanks to God and prayed that he would also end his life in a worthy manner. At the place of execution, the saint prayed that the Lord would forgive the torturers who acted in ignorance and that he would lead them to the knowledge of the truth. Calmly and bravely, the holy martyr, George, bent his neck beneath the sword, receiving the crown of martyrdom on April 23, 303. The pagan era was coming to an end, and Christianity was about to triumph. Within ten years, St. Constantine would issue the Edict of Milan, granting religious freedom to Christians. Of the many miracles worked by the holy great martyr George, the most famous are depicted in iconography in the saint's native city of Beirut, where many idol worshippers, or, or in the native city of Beirut, were many idol worshippers. Outside the city, near Mount Lebanon, was a large lake inhabited by an enormous dragon like serpent. Coming out of the lake, it devoured people, and there was nothing anyone could do. Since the breath from its nostrils poisoned the very air. On the advice of the demons inhabiting the idols, the local ruler came to the decision. Each day, the people would draw lots to feed their own children to the serpent, and he promised to sacrifice his only daughter when his turn came. That time did come, and the ruler dressed her in her finest attire, then sent her off to the lake. The girl wept bitterly, awaiting her death, unexpectedly for her. St. George rode up on his horse with a spear in hand. The girl implored him not to leave her, lest she perish. The saint signed himself with the sign of the cross, he rushed at the serpent, saying, In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. St. George pierced the throat of the serpent with his spear, and trampled it with his horse. Then he told the girl to bind the serpent with her sash, and lead it into the city like a dog on a leash. The people fled in terror, but the saint halted them with the words, don't be afraid, but trust in the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in him, since it is he who sent me to save you. Then the saint killed the serpent with a sword, and the people burned it outside the city. Twenty-five thousand men, not counting women and children, were then baptized. Hallelujah. Later, a church was built and dedicated to the Most Holy Theotokos and the Great Martyr George. St. George went on to become a talented officer and to amaze the world by his military exploits. He died before he was 30 years old. Wow. He is known as Victory Bearer, not only for his military achievements, but for successfully enduring martyrdom. As we know, the martyrs are commemorated in the dismissal at the end of church services as the holy right victorious martyr. <laughs> saint George was the patron saint and protector of several of the great builders of the Russian state. Saint Vladimir's son, Yaroslav the Wise, in holy baptism, his name was George, advanced the veneration of the saint in the Russian church. 
He built the city of Yariev. Um, he also founded the Yariev Monastery of Novgorod, and he built a church of St. George the Victory Bearer at Kiev. The day of the consecration of St. George's Church in Kiev, November 26, 1051, by St. Hilarion, Metropolitan of Kiev, of Kiev and all Rus, was, has entered into the liturgical treasury of the church as a special church feast day. Yariev Day is beloved by the Russian people as an autumn feast of St. George. The name of St. George was also born by the founder of Moscow, Yuri Dolgorky, who, <clears throat> who was the builder of many churches dedicated to St. George and the builder of the city of Yuri, Yuri of Polsk. In the year 1238, the heroic fight of the Russian nation against the Mongol horde was led by the great prince Yuri George Sevil Volodovich of Vladimir, who fell at the battle of at the Sita River. His memory, like that of Igor the Brave and the defender of his land, he is celebrated in Russian spiritual poems and ballads. The first great prince of Moscow, when Moscow had become the center of the Russian land, was Yuri Danilovich, 1325, the son of St. Daniel of Moscow and grandson of St. Alexander Nevsky. From that time, St. George the Victory Bearer, depicted as a horseman slaying the serpent, appeared on Moscow's coat of arms and became an emblem of the Russian state. <clears throat> became an emblem of the Russian state. This has strengthened Russians, Russia's connections with Christian nations, and especially with Iberia, Georgia, the land of St. George. Oh. Georgia, the land of St. George. What an epic life of St. George. Died before he was even 30. Did all that. Valiant warrior. Devout Christian. Endorer of tortures. Slayer of dragons. Toppler of idols. Man, it's crazy. Did the sign of the cross. Talked to the idols. Are you the ones who wants to receive from me a sacrifice befitting to God? And the demons, I think this is very interesting. The demons inhabiting the idols cry out, I am not a God and none of those like me is a God, neither or either. The only God is he whom you preach. We are fallen angels and we deceive people because we are jealous. And they leave with a wailing noise and all the, the idols topple and fall. <clears throat> well, that just confirms my theory that all the pagan gods, all the multi, all the polytheistic gods were the fallen angels. And when, if they say so themselves, <laughs> crazy. Slays the dragon. That's so cool, man. Diocletian, bro. Diocletian. Pagan emperor. Reigned the late 200s to the early 300s. Persecuted so many Christians. Created so many of my favorite saints. It's amazing. So God bless Diocletian for creating so many saint martyrs. Uh, I hope that uh, it's a cool story 
blessed you? Has it blessed me? I hope it blessed you. Um, I love reading the lives of the saints. It's such a blessing. Uh, I'm going to be on out of here. I guess I'll end it at that. St. George, pray for us. Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy upon me. I'll be seeing you later. I might be doing a live stream tomorrow. Tomorrow evening, 8.30, perhaps. I might do it. And I'll probably try to post some videos tomorrow. But until then... Pray the Lord bless you and have mercy upon you. Uh, have a great night. Goodbye.